In this video, we're going to learn how to make a custom UI mesh mask. This way, we can make a mesh out of any shape and mask out multiple parts of our UI while using just a single mask. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is one of those videos where I had a problem, I did some research and I couldn't really find an easy solution. So if you're researching the same thing that I was, which is how to make a mesh mask in the UI, then hopefully this video will help you. Now I need this because I wanted to mask multiple parts of the UI. I wanted to have multiple lines of text and smoothly reveal each of them. You can easily make a mask by creating a UI object, adding an image and a mask component, and then put whatever you want to mask as a child of that object. However, in doing it this way, you're limited to just this image. You can mask multiple children, but you cannot mask using multiple parents. So you cannot compose a mask of multiple objects. Now, one simple solution is to make a texture with the alpha channel in the shape that you want. So using this texture with two squares, and yep, it shows both parts of the underlying object. However, now we're using this approach, we're working with textures, which makes animation really tricky. If I wanted to animate this, I would need to smoothly make some of the mask pixels visible, and that would be a very clunky way of doing things. I was working on the CodeMonkey Steam app, which by the way, you can click the link in the description to add it to your wishlist. I wanted to have some text on the interactive tutorials and use a mask to show parts of it over time. So I needed to combine a mesh with a custom shape that I could easily animate to follow multiple text lines. Okay, so here's what we're going to learn. Over here is this text object with just a bunch of tests, and it's inside a mask object. Now, as I press play, Yep, there you go, you can see that the mask object is growing and smoothly showing the text. Now if we pause, we can look at the mask, and yep, there's the shape growing which shows the text behind it. So we can hide the mask graphic, and yep, that's how it looks. So far, doing for a single line would work just fine using a simple image, but then the issue is we want this mask to stay visible, and we want to add another one so that we can continue masking out the various other lines. So over here is the final result using multiple quads to make a single mesh mask. Over here you can see the final mesh shape, which is a single mesh, which itself is composed of three separate quads. So you can build whatever mesh shape you want, either through code or by manually building a mesh and using it as a mask. So this is how you can make a custom mesh to mask out your UI. This video's Patreon sponsor is Bad Adventurer. Bad Adventurer is a game development duo currently working on their first game, Wayfarer's Edge. It's a RPG focused on exploring and settling unknown frontier lands in a low fantasy and wild west theme. Check them out at badadventurer.com. Thank you to the Patreon sponsor and thank you to these awesome supporters for making this video possible. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our starting scene and let's go into the UI canvas here and let's create a text object. Alright, so here's some basic text. Now we want to mask it. So let's first look at how a basic UI mask works. And the way we do that is we create a new UI. Let's make it an image. Then here we add a component. We add a mask component. And now to mask something, we just need to make it a child of this object. So just drag that one on there. And yep, just like that, the text is now only visible whilst inside the shape of this image. Now, right now, the source image in here is set to null. So this is displaying a basic rectangle but you can assign any texture in here. So for example, let's use a circle. And there you go, now the mask takes on the shape of a circle. So this is how you make a very basic mask. You have the parent with an image and a mask, and then you have whatever children you want, and it masks out the children. Now the issue comes when, let's say that we want to show this part of the text and then this part as well. Now, since the mask works based on the shape of the parent, we can only have a single mask shape. So the mask works based on what this image is rendering. Now, like I said, one possible approach is to make a texture with the shape that you want. So down here, I have this texture here, just two squares and the rest of it is alpha transparent. So if instead I apply this one, and yep, just like that, I am masking out two parts of the underlying object. So if your goal is just a fixed mask shape, then this approach will do. However, since this is based on a texture and its alpha channel, it makes it very tricky to modify. In order to modify it, I would have to play around with setting these pixels to fully opaque and so on and so on. So that would not be the best approach, so instead let's create a custom mask shape. 
Well, let's create a new C sharp script. Call this the mesh mask UI. And now here we're going to create our own custom mask type. Now to do that, we just need to extend instead of mono behavior, we're going to extend maskable graphic, which is inside using unity engine.ui. So there it is. Let's just hit save and see. Now here, let's remove the mask and our image component and then let's add our nice script. And yep, just like that, it already shows a few fields. So these are all from the maskable graphic base class. Now for now, let's leave everything at default. Let's just change the color to a nice green to make it very visible, all right? Now back in the code here, in order to make our custom mesh, we're going to override one of the functions. It's called the populate mesh. Now this one gets called automatically by the UI system to create the mesh of our maskable graphic. And this function has an argument of type vertex helper. So it's a nice helper class to help us handle mesh shapes. Now the first thing we do is to make sure to clear whatever the current shape of our mesh is. So we go into the vertex helper and we just call clear, okay? And now it's in here that we can set up our custom mesh shape. So let's start off with a very simple square. All right, we have defined the position for all our vertices and then we just access the vertex helper to add a UI vertex quad. All right, so just like that. Now, one thing here, in order for this to actually work, we need to give the UI vertex a color. If you leave it at empty, it just won't work. I'm not sure why, but just give it a random color and it works. So this is really all it takes. We clear the current mesh shape and then we add our custom vertices. And if we go back into the editor, and if we're right away, we see our mask shape. So here it is, just a basic quad with 50 by 50. All right, great. So our object is creating the mesh and making it maskable. And in order to make it an actual mask, we just need to add the mask component. And just like that, yep, there it is. And we can either show or hide the mask graphic. Okay, so now let's see how this helps us solve the original problem of having a mask with multiple shapes. Down here, we can make another UI vertex quad. All right, so we have our original quad and one next to it. And if we go back, any of there it is, we have our two visual quads. So we have a single mask parent. And by using a custom mesh, we can mask out multiple areas of our underlying object. So there it is. All right, awesome. Now all we need to do is really just extend upon this concept. So here, let's try animating our mask. Let's just increase the size over time. All right, just like that, we should see a rectangle stretching. However, when you go back here, it doesn't actually work. So our mesh shape is not actually increasing. That is because we are missing one thing, which is in here, the UI system only calls this function when it absolutely needs to, meaning that it does not call it automatically on every frame. So if we want to do that, we can make our private void update. And in here, we tell it to update all vertices. So we just go set vertices as dirty and they will update. So just like that, now this should update on every frame. And if there it is, now we have our custom mesh shape animating over time. Awesome. All right, so now with this, you can obviously use whatever mesh shape you want. It doesn't have to be just a simple rectangle. So for example, you could make a mesh in the shape of a star and just rotate around, or really any shape you want to animate and in any way you want. All right, so here is the final script that I made for the CodeMonkey Steam app. It has the mask mesh UI script. Then as a child of it, it has the same text object. And then over here, I have a container with a bunch of children and each of them has a simple script just with two fields. So just a float for the start time and another one for the total time. So that's the total amount of time that this rectangle will take to reach its final shape. So this object has this shape and each of them is covering one line. And then the mask mesh UI over here has a reference to the mask container and it simply applies those masks. Let's see, there it is. And all of a sudden, yep, there you go. There's the mask shape being created over time. So here it is with the game and the scene view side by side, and you can indeed see the mask shape constantly growing. So this is a great way to smoothly scroll over some text in any manner you want. As I said, I researched this while working on the CodeMonkey Steam app. If you haven't yet, then please check the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. 
I'm trying to build something really cool and it should hopefully be out sometime next month. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.